Welcome back. Not so quick, my friends. We just realized there's one more that we need to talk about. So let's go back to the whiteboard. This is part two. We didn't talk about the last one, forecasting and release planning. Now, to talk about this one, I will show you a PowerPoint deck real quick, not to go too into it, but you need to really understand what exactly is happening here. So when you are planning releases, it's different from sprint planning. Sprint planning is focusing on what you're doing for the next sprint. And of course, the sprint at hand. So when we talk about sprint planning, you're really more in the sprint itself. Sprint planning is for the sprint itself. You could also look at backlog refinement as some form of planning for future sprint, right? So we're really talking about the concept of refining the backlog and sprint planning when you talk about sprint planning. But when you talk about release planning, you're not talking about the sprint, you're talking about a series of sprints. And not just that, you're also talking about a bunch of features. So when you think about release planning, you can't think about it without the term road mapping coming to mind. So real quick here, we have the concept of road mapping. Again, this is not one of the scrum tenants or anything, but the idea is instead of doing sprint planning, think about releases, right? Planning for releases could mean you're bucketizing several sprints together and the increments from those sprints is what gives you a release, see? So you're thinking more long-term and in broader brush strokes. That's really what you're doing. Now let's jump really quickly into uh, Ken's site because it's not a whole lot of content uh, where this is concerned uh, in the actual Scrum Guide, okay? So let's jump quickly into release planning. Let me show you that here. All right, so we've got a few documents on managing products with agility, and that's forecasting and release planning. So release planning is just one of the things mentioned here. We also need to talk about forecasting. I would advise going to this page, right? We have uh, tips for agile product roadmaps. I just showed you a roadmap, right? Um, also the concept of velocity and story points and capacity uh, also needs to come up. So let me just hit that really quick with my slide deck. Let's go back to my slide deck. Here we go. All right, so the, the summary of it is as a product owner, as a developer, as a scrum master, you probably are gonna be hit with someone that says, I would like you to do X, Y, Z for me. And just bear in mind, the whole concept of story points is not like hardcore Scrum, but it's used by a lot of people who use Scrum. So imagine you find a number of story points for your project, and let's say it's 50 story points on average every sprint. Well, that could be like maybe the middle of the road. You could also have a very good performance and a not too good performance or a less than ideal performance. And I'll just show you what that looks like here. We have a green line, which shows the ideal or the best, the best. And then we have this red line, which shows you what the worst could be. Now, if someone says to you, um, could you give me 250 story points in uh, two weeks or two sprints? So down here, we've got the convention of sprints or weeks. Let's say we're talking sprints. Someone says 250 story points is what I need. Can you do that in two weeks? Well, what you need to do is go look at your velocity and say, well, based on the way we work, we cannot do that in two weeks. It's most likely going to be somewhere around, and then you can trace from here, this is 250, and you could tell them the best case scenario is around four weeks, but if I was going to give you the line of best fit is going to be around five sprints. See that? Five sprints. So within five sprints, I can get you that. On the flip side, if someone comes to you and says, what can you do for me in three weeks? You could tell them within, or three sprints. Within three sprints, you could give them an estimate of between this and this. 
And that is pretty much how we deal with forecasts. And you can see it's empirical data. If this was a team that was working, this is based on data from real stuff that they've done, not just a pie in the sky idea. So you can still go back here, read other things uh, that they've mentioned here on the page. But the bottom line is, if you want to do a good job with your release planning and your forecasting, you need to be thinking about these things, right? Story points, they're not required in Scrum. As you can see here, there are other ways of estimating, right? Um, agile product roadmaps, another very important one to think about. And then when you're thinking about releases, you got to check for your velocity and have an idea of what can we do within this window or when would th these features most likely be done? And that will help you uh, a lot better in your forecasting and your release planning. Okay, and I believe we got it, didn't we, Caroline? That's the last one, right? For sure. <laughs> I think we got it. Yes, I think so. All right, thank you, Caroline. Many thanks for helping us move forward with this. Everyone else, I hope you found value from it. Remember, this is a second video in a series of two. All right, so look for the first video so that you get the full value of what we're talking about. Bye for now.